I didn't actually know that the council offered stuff like this. Obviously the council were heavily involved in that. What's the first thing they do? They call their local council. The closer you are, the more we care. Sunny and breezy Victor Harbour is one of South Australia's most picturesque towns. From schoolies to retirees, Victor is a jewel on the south coast. Victor Harbour Council is actively focusing on developing alternative energy in its community, starting with an innovative group buying scheme to increase residents' use of solar power. When we started this in 2009, I think on the first day that we asked people to register their interest, we had 300 people in our corridor. Our program just kept rolling on, which today sees us in the order of 50% of houses under panel, saving roughly $1.5 to $1.8 million per annum and offsetting at least 3,000 tonnes of carbon gas. So whilst there's a nice green feeling to it, its prime reason is economic because the costs of energy, of course, are skyrocketing. We had a look at that and decided that it would be a good way to reduce our power bill. So about two years ago we had a system put on. We've got 16 panels, 3 kilowatt system. So for the last two years we haven't had a power bill. I heard of a little council in eastern Victoria. Uh, they uh, organised a group buy through the council. Um, I rang them and said, uh, how'd you find it? And when he said it was an outstanding success, I simply copied it. Even in my wildest dreams, I had no idea that it would be so successful. The council has also begun a pilot scheme which aims to harness alternative energy sources to power street lighting. The gadget behind us uh, using wind and solar to generate power. It stores that power in a battery and then lights up the area at night. The hybrid unit generates and stores excess power, but council has come up with a clever way of using even the excess energy and helping the community. The extra power that we're looking at, if we put a couple of batteries in there, we could run a gopher up. Now a lot of our older folks here get around on these little you know, battery driven gadgets and to charge them at home is a pretty expensive exercise. So socially we figure that uh, it's not too hard just to put a gadget in there and uh, people using the gophers can come in, plug in and charge them up. It allows you to get out and about. If you want to go for um, a long time on your gopher you could run out of battery so that restricts how far you can go, particularly on these smaller ones that haven't got the capacity of the bigger ones. Well in my case I could come from home to here, charge my battery up and then perhaps go on to the bluff or somewhere like that, whereas at the moment I wouldn't be game to go that far on mine. So I think it would open up a lot more doors for people. So what does this all mean to the residents of Victor Harbour? Once it's fully rolled out, if we can dent our public lighting bill, if we can lower our costs, we have money to spend on other things like roads and uh, other public works. If, if we're continually pressured with rising energy costs, we have to pay those at the expense of our community. And that is why I think the LGA is keen to see programs like this work. For career opportunities with your local council, visit www.careersincouncil.sa.gov.au. Councils get close to the things that matter to you.